Tell you what I'll do. First person that can comment, first person that can name the last video that I MIG welded in, free t-shirt. What's the last video? Not the last video, any video. Name a video I MIG welded in. Besides this one. Just out here spending a little time on the body. Just kind of stitch welding these up a little bit. I'll have to go through and grind all this stuff back up. Got the old Transteel 2700 working. Even though, even though that thing's behemoth you still turn it way down and it's nice and subtle sometimes it can be really tough when you're mig welding really really thin sheet metal you know the kind of it's like an automobile especially like on this thing you can see how thin that is maybe you can't maybe you can't i don't know what gauge it is i'm gonna say it's like like a 20 gauge or 22 gauge or it's thin it's super thin sometimes it's tough you kind of blow through it so i'll tell you a little trick i actually did a video on this a long time ago uh it was a friday video but i mean i got a hundred of those things now so it may have been a long time ago but take these little copper spoons just a little copper plate and um anywhere you're having issues where you're blowing through or you need to fill some holes you can just put this on the back side and then you kind of, you, you basically just weld straight to this, uh, but it won't attach itself to the copper. You can actually just pull it right back off and it'll, it'll release. So you can see like that hole right there. When I get ready to fill it, I'll just take this piece of copper, put it behind it, and just go to town welding that hole up. And then when it's done, I'll just pop this off and it'll actually fill that hole real nice. There's actually a couple holes right here that I filled. And then what I'll do up here too, you can see where before I'd kind of blew through this. I'll just get me some copper strips, push them in there. I can just weld that seam up, pull that copper out, and I'm good to go. See that there? That was a uh, that was a hole as well. So I can just go through and weld these holes up and then kind of grind them flush. And it'll look like one solid piece of sheet metal when I'm done. Hot. I also uh, these Fox bodies come with uh, some lead right here in this uh, in this a pillar on both sides it's where they put the two body panels together and I guess the cheap way or the easy the fast way I don't know is to just fill it with lead they don't actually I mean they weld it together but um, it's not a clean fit and I think even like on the 95s they do it the same way but they have like the 95 the SN95, I guess, is the body style. They have these like fiberglass or plastic or some kind of pieces that just pop on there. So when you pop those off, you have kind of the same deal. You can see how that body panel was kind of formed like that, top and bottom, and then they just crudely welded it in there. And then they just fill this with lead. So. I heated it up, melted all the lead out of there, and then I'm going to go back in here and weld this all up. I'll just fill weld it, try not to put too much heat in it. And then once, um, once I got it kind of built up a little bit, I'll grind it flush and it'll be one solid piece again. Main reason for doing that is just so it's going to be bare metal all the time and you want that consistent look of metal through it. You could actually see the difference between the metal and the lead when I, when I was... Uh, putting a surface in it in the last video you could if you look closely you could see the difference in it so anyway enough talking gonna get back on the chassis on this thing i got some bars i want to cut and put in there so let's do that
So there's those two bars fit. You'll probably notice I drilled holes in the uh, upper and lower trans tunnel bars. And the reason I did that is you want all these bars to vent uh, through each other. Basically when you're welding them, they're going to build up heat, it's going to build up pressure, and if you don't vent them when you get to the end, it's just going to blow out that well. So <clears throat> these lower bars vent into this back bar here and this back bar vents out the sides so you drill a hole in the lower bar and you drill in the hole in the upper bar and they all vent through each other out the sides I hope that makes sense so basically this lower bar goes through and where that thing is welded there is a quarter inch hole in there so any kind of pressure in this tube can go through that little quarter inch hole and then it goes out this tube here so I drill a hole here and I drill a hole in the bottom of this one and now all these tubes are vented out the back. That's pretty standard for anybody that's wondering about strength. All your chassis cars do that. And then what I'll do at the very end is the uh, two vent holes that are in that bottom tube. I will, when it's all done, I'm done with all the welding. I will just put some silicone in that hole and plug it up. And then of course I still have to do something with this front setup. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I've got some plates, some of that thick plate. I'm going to make some head mounts and then I'll make adjustable bars that go off the heads to here, off that head to there, and then I'll actually make a bar that ties the two cylinder heads in together. And so the cylinder head itself is not taking the forces It'll be almost like one continuous bar, except for the fact that they'll be mounted to the cylinder head. All 
All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. It's hot and sticky out here. It's late. So I'm going in the house. But as always, thank you for joining me. I'll see you guys some more this week. Go do work, son. Thank <laughs> you.